Okay, greetings from the United States. And uh, uh, this is Dr. Aiko Holman. I want to uh, greet you, Japanese people. I am Japanese. I was born in Yokohama and then moved to Tokyo. And then uh, in 1948, I believe, I received scholarships to uh, uh, go to U.S. college in Missouri and then later on into other universities and got my degrees and uh, I was uh, a research scientist at first at the Westinghouse Research Labs and then later on with the Pentagon. I was the research project leader of artificial intelligence and uh, as I said top secret clearance so I had uh, uh, access to a lot of things. At that time, I did not know anything about the spiritual uh, area of my life, and I thought I was having really exciting time because we were at the so-called frontier, you, you know, of research, top secret and uh, high-level uh, new ideas and so on. Uh, in 1950. Eight, I believe. Uh, my friend, who is also a physicist, and he was also a research scientist, approached me saying, Aiko, have you ever read this book? And I said, what's that? And uh, he said, it's called the Bible. And uh, how old is it? It was, it's a few thousand years old. And I said, no, thank you, because I'm in the latest the research information and then any textbook that is older than two years old is obsolete i want the latest so i'm not interested in any ancient uh, so-called wisdom well anyway he said you will be surprised at many things in a supernatural way that god revealed to human beings and uh, so you you need to read it and he said he i will give it to you well I said thank you and in my own mind I thought you know within a week I would just uh, you know check it out and uh, I would just give it back to him but do you know that I was actually astonished to see many many prophecies about the Messiah one single person in the Old Testament from different uh, prophets different countries different locations and different period, all zero in on one single person, the Messiah. And I was fulfilled in one person, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And so at that time, I, I was still skeptical, but I did the calculation, mathematical uh, uh, probability calculation of those uh, prophecies coming to pass by sheer chance and it turned out to be one divided by one after you know hundred zeros nonillion so that was astronomical so i at least intellectually i was uh, you know impressed that the, there must be some you know real significant information in this book and so i started to read more and especially about the about jesus how he came, how he died for us, and so on. Uh, but the, my heart wasn't touched, even though my intellect was, uh, you know, stirred up. But I came to the point when I listened to his teaching, his loving attitude of healing people from the sick, but especially when he touched the leper and healed them. And that was really a significant moment of realization that Jesus had tremendous compassion on the down and outer because leprosy was such a uh, you know terrible condition and a leper had to cannot mingle with other people had to say unclean unclean and people will avoid you know coming even near him but 
Jesus actually touched the leper. I mean, that was unthinkable. Because in, in Japan, in high school, I saw a video taping of a leper's colony. And I think it was uh, American people, uh, missionaries, went to leper's colony and uh, show the terrible conditions of the leprosy, you know, like a ear missing and nose missing or fingers missing and open sores and just, you know, body fluid oozing out of those open sores and terrible, terrible uh, sight. And uh, things like that it, it was, you know, to, to me it's uh, horrible things. But Jesus went in there and met them and touched the lepers. So that was sort of a turning point in my mind how Jesus is not just a, a representative of God coming to this earth to demonstrate God's love, but he is in, in, in many, many other uh, scriptures who actually prove this. Jesus is God who came in the flesh. And he, he was one of the so-called trinities, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so he's the co-creator of the entire universe. If you understand the vastness and intricacies of all the you know, creation and different uh, galaxies, not just our galaxy, but different galaxies, and uh, uh, even now, uh, many uh, uh, astrophysicists are so impressed by the fact that so-called fine-tuning of the Earth conditions, the distance between the Sun and the, uh, the Earth, and the, the Sun and the Moon, the Moon and the uh, Earth, and uh, some of the constants that they discovered have to be precise and uh, if any of this uh, uh, measurement are slightly different, even a tiny amount of deviation from the current condition, uh, make the life totally unstable. Or in fact, the so-called life will not exist whatsoever. So they call it fine tuning. And this was deliberately planned by God to have the, all this you know, measurements uh, pre precisely balanced. So, uh, not not only in those things, but in the book of Job, there are many things that uh, it's not written as a scientific textbook, but many things that God said to Job was very significant about the creation and so on. I am fully convinced that the Bible and the stories and instances uh, recorded in the Bible is true, including Noah's Ark. Many people are uh, you know, skeptical about that, and also uh, gigantic global flood and things like that, but now being proven and uh, more archaeological uh, you know, evidences and uh, so-called evolution is just a theory. After I became a believer, a born again Christian, the Lord started to show me many, many things in the spirit realm, which is not discernible from a natural senses. And uh, I have seen many miracles of healing, not just the uh, healing, but the recreated miracles, like uh, ears open, uh, blind eyes open, and the cancer healed. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who died for you and uh, cleared all your conscience of sins of you know we all have sinned and anyway uh, we can be his disciples and do the same miracles because he actually said the the miracles I do you shall do also even greater miracles and so I'm looking forward to do uh, some even greater miracles and uh, you can be part of the the group of people who will rise up to do the miracles in his name because when when we speak in the name of Jesus 
or Yeshua HaMashiach, that's the Hebrew name, all the demon forces have to obey and all the nature, natural, natural forces have to obey because he's a creator. And anyway, you will have really exciting life, not just exciting, fulfilling life. Because when you touch other people's lives, well, who are, you know, suffering with pain or cancer or whatever, it, it is really uh, tremendous uh, feelings of doing my part of the, you know, why I am here. Have you ever thought about that? Why am I here? What is my destiny? Okay, so it's not just going to heaven, sweep by and by and uh, playing, you know, singing songs and so, that's not just that. But there are more things to do and it is exciting things. Uh, and so I want to invite you to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and finish work of Him, Jesus, uh, at Calvary, and so that you can have the indwelling presence of God inside of you, everyday life, and going anywhere, going shopping or cooking or driving, whatever you do, you have that, you will develop the awareness of who you are and what you're destined to do. Okay, so I'm inviting you to uh, join me, and uh, this is a wonderful life. And uh, if you wish to repeat after me, uh, even skeptical, and you can still do it, and then later on you will have more uh, assurance with more uh, biblical, you know, scripture references and so on. But right now, just say this now, Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I ask you to come into my heart and I believe in you and I make me a child of God and no longer outside looking in, but part of the family of God. Amen. Thank you.